Once you discover this sentence, your mind will explode with such volcanic fury that you will manifest true wealth and abundance. A sentence many sell their souls for, and a sentence that 99% of the world won't ever know about, because you cannot buy this with money, and it is reserved for the upper echelons of society, passed down by generations of nobles and aristocrats. But before I share it with you, I must warn you, this documentary will make you furious. It has to do with a decorated Vietnam veteran getting killed in cold blood after devoting his whole life to his fatherland. And a second warning, if you're a materialistic person who is close-minded and you cannot believe in the soul and the spiritual, then click away. This is not for you, because this documentary goes deep into the dark depths of humanity, from alchemy to angelic wisdom and holy scriptures. But don't worry, you don't have to be a religious person to use this. It doesn't matter if you're a Christian, Jew, Muslim, Buddhist, or even an atheist. All that's important is that you keep an open mind. With those two disclaimers out of the way, let me share the fastest and most powerful manifestation method in the world. You see, the law of attraction and other modern rituals are fake clones of the real thing. Best part of all? The real thing is easier to activate. No need for visualization, no speaking affirmations, and no constant struggle to keep your vibration high. All you have to do is write down one sentence in an ancient language, allowing you to attract an abundance of wealth, health, and true love. Sounds pretty unbelievable, right? I thought the same, but I know better now. Even though I was more than skeptical, the real manifestation law worked for me, far better than I ever thought it would, because now I'm living my dream life. So let me take you back in time to where it all started. My name is George Thompson. This is the story of how I went from a homeless bum to a millionaire living the dream life. I was a veteran and one of the many men who became a statistic, just a number after the war. My only family, my mother, died while I was away, and it gutted me that I wasn't there for her. Arriving home, I faced another blow. I found out that my childhood love and fiancé had cheated on me with her co-worker. When I confronted her, she kept denying it until she finally broke down and admitted she felt lonely and wanted to be loved. Lonely? What about my loneliness when I was under fire in the dirt? Reeling from this betrayal, I called off the wedding. But things spiraled further out of control. She had the audacity to take me to court over our shared home. And, to my disbelief, she won. The court ruled in her favor, forcing me to move out. Feeling abandoned and betrayed, I turned to alcohol for solace and locked myself up in a cheap motel. Life started to slip out of my fingertips. As my PTSD worsened and my savings dwindled, my situation worsened. Before I knew it, I hit rock bottom. My last bit of money was spent on booze, and with no funds left, I was kicked out of the motel. Forced onto the streets, I found myself begging to survive. Sitting on the sidewalks with a cardboard sign, people passed me by, indifferent. In those moments, life flashed before my eyes, and I envisioned a hopeless future. Dying alone, a poor old drunk, a forgotten statistic. But one day while getting some food at a shelter, a fateful encounter shifted my destiny. Among the usual faces, there was a stranger, an older man in a finely tailored Italian suit. On his wrist, a shining Rolex watch. He moved with an elegant grace, a cane supporting him. Why would someone like him be here? I asked myself. Then I noticed a Medal of Honor pinned on his coat. A fellow veteran. Our eyes met. His gaze held a depth of wisdom, a piercing intensity that seemed to strip me naked, understanding my struggles in a mere glance. He smiled, and in that moment, my worries evaporated like water on a hot pan. Approaching me, he said, Son, that cloud of despair around you is suffocating. I recognize that look in your eyes all too well. Don't bother with food stamps today. I'm Mr. Colton. Let me treat you to a decent meal at my favorite spot. And before you refuse, hear me out. Your eyes, they remind me of myself coming back from Vietnam. Abandoned, waiting for aid that never arrived. 
living in silent desperation. Trust me, if you're seeking a change, follow me. Hesitant but drawn to his mysterious aura, I followed, sensing his pure intentions. His car left me speechless, a brand new Rolls Royce. I had so many questions but couldn't ask them. I was overwhelmed by his charisma, attitude, and abundance of wealth. The drive was short, ending at a luxurious five-star hotel. Inside, he was known by name and treated like royalty. We were escorted to the rooftop restaurant bustling with the elite. Businessmen, oil shakes, athletes, celebrities. The wealth was almost disturbing. Seated at the best table overlooking the city, I couldn't hold back my questions any longer. You said you were like me, a war-torn veteran. How do you have a Rolls Royce? You're a regular in a place like this, surrounded by the rich and famous. How can you afford all this? He smiled subtly, then began to speak. What you're about to hear might sound unbelievable, perhaps even absurd, but it's all true and will change your life, so pay close attention. Let me tell you about a man few people know about, but who changed the world. Picture this, it's England in the 16th century under Queen Elizabeth I. Enter John Dee, her advisor, a controversial man shrouded in mystery, but still a respected scholar in both the scientific and the mystical. He combined fields like alchemy and mathematics to create immense breakthroughs. This led to advancements for the Navy and through him, the British Empire became the largest empire in history, which spanned from the Americas to Asia. But his biggest failure that led to his most amazing discovery, while trying to create the Philosopher's Stone, an alchemical substance rumored to grant divine illumination and heavenly bliss, he stumbled upon a weird book. This book described the language of angels. Without thinking much of it, he took some notes and wrote down some sentences. What happened next shook John Dee to his core. The things he wrote down came to be, and that's how manifestation was born. You see, language is immensely powerful. Words create meaning and understanding, and this language connected that meaning to the will of the universe. John Dee ended up calling it the Law of Genesis, a reference to the Book of Genesis, the first book in the Bible, where God spoke all known things into existence. Now I understand that you might be skeptical, and to be honest, I was too, you see, I wasn't much of a religious person myself. So why am I telling you all this? Despite my religious indifference, my experience in the Vietnam War, where I rose through the ranks due to my military accomplishments, led me to a classified research project, Project Seraphim. It was created so American spies and other operatives could gain an edge during the Cold War. This project was based on John Dee's work and I was tasked to protect the lead researcher. This wasn't a cushy job in the office. We were right behind enemy lines in the trenches. You see, the Cold War was at a boiling point and the nuclear threat was at an all-time high. Information was crucial and we had to get the upper hand. Then a miracle happened. A month after Project Seraphim started, using the law of Genesis, a significant shift happened. The nuclear crisis was averted, and the tide of the Cold War turned in favor of America. This project, based on the law of Genesis, played an unsung role in the victory of the most incendiary war in modern history. I was discharged from duty and received my medals and little compensation, then re-entered civilian life, directionless and pondering over the impact of what we had achieved. I don't know what happened to the researcher or his findings, it must be kept somewhere under lock and key. But I remembered some of it while overhearing the research team work. I wondered if I could use the law of Genesis for myself, if it could change history and the fate of the world. How hard would it be to change my life with it? You see, coming back from service, I discovered that my mother was suffering from severe sickness and the hospital bills were climbing up. With no idea how to make money, I decided to try out the law of Genesis I had a hard time remembering the exact words I needed to write down to manifest and made many mistakes. But either through sheer luck or divine intervention, I managed to write down one correct sentence. Before I knew it, I had enough money to cover my mother's hospital bills. Since then, 
I've used the law of Genesis to amass a fortune. Listen, George, I'm an old man now, and I only have one regret. That is that I kept this secret to myself and never shared it with anyone. You see, I don't need the law of Genesis anymore. I've enjoyed my life of abundance and want to spend my last days in quietness and peace. So I decided to use it one more time and wrote down my last wish. That is to manifest someone who resembled my younger self so he could become my messenger and inherit the law of Genesis. Then you showed up. I believe you are that messenger. When he finished his story, I was dumbfounded and thought it was a bunch of crap. But my curiosity took the best of me. After all, he was not faking his wealth. So I thought that just maybe, maybe he was telling the truth. He then stared at me with such a serious look and made me vow before giving me the codex. Vow that once I manifested my dream life using the law of Genesis that I would spread the word to anyone and everyone who needed this. I didn't want to believe this man, but I couldn't help it. And after a moment of silence, I did. I vowed that I would spread the word and carry his torch. I vowed that I would do anything in my power to take the law of Genesis and put it into the hands of the people. He then gave me his codex. Looking at it blew my mind. It was incredible. I could tell that he experimented with it throughout the years. Everything made sense and it felt like all the puzzle pieces in my brain finally came together. So that's what's been missing, I thought to myself, and I could taste the new life I was about to experience. Our meal finished, and he left me his number to call whenever I needed him. I thanked him for his time and went back to the homeless shelter. But being back in that environment didn't make me sad. In fact, it did the opposite. I cherished my very last moments in poverty. Over the next few days, I wrote down my deepest desires using the law of Genesis. I could tell that John D was a real genius. The angelic language was complex yet simple at the same time, as if a higher being wrote this, making it very easy that even a fifth grader would be able to use this. Yet a master poet would never even be able to come up with this one his own. I was sincere and I was excited, excited to activate the law of Genesis and start manifesting much needed money into my life. But nothing happened. In fact, things got worse. I caught a terrible fever that made me lose what little weight I had and shriveled like a skeleton. The homeless shelter needed to host new people, meaning I'd have to sleep out on the streets for the next few weeks. With no food, no shelter and no hope, I cursed the world. I cursed the old man. Conned, betrayed, a fool, that's what I was. Believing a stranger's absurd story. That night, crossing a bridge, the thought of ending everything flashed in my mind. Standing on the edge, I dialed the suicide hotline. No answer. The irony of the situation struck me, and I burst out in a maniacal laughter. How bad could my luck get? The situation, so ludicrous, as if right out of a tragicomedy, made me step off the edge. Still laughing, I walked on. Then, a trash can with some scraps of food caught my eye. Driven by hunger, I reached for a half-eaten burrito. And that's when I saw it. A discarded scratch ticket, lying there as if waiting for me. I found it weird, but without much thought, slipped the ticket into my pocket and sat down with the burrito under the starlit sky. The next day, I decided to turn in the scratch ticket. I didn't expect much. But I thought to myself, why not? Then I saw the clerk widening his eyes. He told me it's a winner and that I just earned $50,000. To some, this might not be an incredible amount, but to me, it was a godsend. I moved into a nice apartment in a fancy neighborhood. That's when I wondered if this was because of the law of Genesis. I gave it one more chance. I started writing down everything I wanted to manifest using the one sentence. And again, nothing happened at first, but slowly and surely, everything in my notebook manifested into reality. I bought a few lottery tickets and won a total sum of $472,000. Then, while looking for new furniture at my apartment, I stumbled upon my dream girl, Sarah. She was incredibly charming and had her own booming beauty business. Finally, 
My body, frail and sick from alcohol abuse, made a slow and steady recovery. My cravings disappeared and my brain automatically repelled alcohol. The law of Genesis worked. That was years ago now. And today, I'm living my dream life. I ended up marrying Sarah. We have two beautiful girls and one strong boy. It's a pleasure to watch them grow up in a healthy household and being able to provide the best opportunities to them. I used my lottery winnings and invested it into the stock market. Of course, using the law of Genesis, it was not hard to analyze the market and my investments blew up and my net worth boomed to millions of dollars. Using that money, I created a thriving media business, easily attracting big clients and contracts. I've also kept my vow to Mr. Colton. I understood there was some risk involved in it. You see, Mr. Colton was afraid of something. I wasn't sure of what, so I stayed undercover and spread the law of Genesis as much as I could without getting noticed. First, to my close friends and relatives, like Mike, who used the law of Genesis to manifest his way out of poverty. He was a used car salesman who grew up in a poor family and struggled to make ends meet. He was skeptical at first, but saw my meteoric rise to wealth and abundance and decided to give the law of Genesis a shot. Just a week after writing down his desires, he started attracting an immense amount of clients. The deals just started flooding in and he had a hard time stopping it, leading to his first ever six-figure paycheck. He couldn't believe it, especially since he made many mistakes and butchered some meetings, but he became the top sales rep, breaking all company records. This wasn't just a stroke of luck. Mike kept blowing records month after month. His remarkable performance didn't go unnoticed, and in less than six months, he was promoted. He went from a regular salesperson to a managerial position, overseeing a new department in the store. Mike's story shows how powerful the law of Genesis can be. It helped him break free from being poor in a very short time. I also gave the law of Genesis to my friend Emma, an aspiring musician struggling to find her big break. She tried everything, from trying to sell her albums on the streets, to mailing and calling every record label she could find. Emma even tried the law of attraction to manifest success, but no matter what, nothing worked. She only got gigs at local bars with drunk old men. All this changed once we gave her the law of Genesis. Emma started writing down her deepest desires, and slowly but surely, her dream came true. At first, nothing much happened. She only sold a couple of extra albums and got a few hundred views on social media. But she wasn't convinced this came from the law of Genesis. It could just be a coincidence after all. But as both you and me know now, the law of Genesis takes some time to kick in, leaving you in anxiety before rewarding you. And boy, did the rewards flood in for Emma? One of her songs went viral and got millions of views. A big record label noticed her and signed Emma for a multi-million dollar deal, instantly making her wealthy beyond belief. And because of the law of Genesis, her inner eye opened, which led to her brain surging with creativity. She couldn't stop writing masterpiece after masterpiece. In less than three months, Emma went from the brink of poverty to an absolute superstar. Today, she travels across Asia, drawing inspiration from her adventures. Using her newfound wealth, Emma contributes to building schools and supporting causes close to her heart, affecting real change with her music. Even Marissa, a successful businesswoman who struggled with her love life, manifested her dream man using the law of Genesis. Marissa is an intelligent and beautiful woman. She had everything she wanted except a companion to share her blessings with. Time and time again, she could not manifest the man of her dreams. Instead, she attracted guys that only wanted her for her body. Once these men got what they wanted, they start to play games with her and vanish without a word. All this changed once she started using the law of Genesis. In just a few days, she attracted high-value men, men that respected her for her career and were all working towards their own goals, men who ran successful businesses, men who knew exactly what they wanted and were looking for a serious relationship, without playing games and without pushing and pulling away. And before she knew it, 
One man swept her off her feet. He took Marissa out to fancy dinners, surprised her with little gifts, and gave her the attention she deserved. And one day he asked her to be official. And today, they're a happy and married couple traveling the world. After the law of Genesis changed the lives of my friends and family, I knew deep within my soul that this is my mission. I started to receive emails, texts, and calls from people who manifested everything they wrote down into reality. But I still felt like it wasn't enough. I will never forget what I promised to Mr. Colton and what put me in this blessed situation in the first place. As I mentioned, I used all my money to start a media company so I can spread the word about the law of Genesis without relying on big corporations. I'll tell you why in a moment. But first, pay close attention. Because over the next few minutes, I will show you exactly how the law of Genesis works. As I mentioned before, this is the most powerful yet easiest manifestation method. You don't have to visualize. You don't have to keep your vibrations high. And you don't even have to work hard to manifest your dreams. All you have to do is write down one sentence, and you will activate the Law of Genesis. Manifesting everything you wrote down. Mr. Colton recommends doing this for at least 11 days, since 11 is the number of the angels. Not only that, but after we did some research, we found that 11 is also a scientific number. You see, Neuroscientists from Harvard, Cambridge, Stanford, and other prestigious universities have proven that it takes 11 days to put a memory into the subconscious. What's more, we discovered that on average it took 11 days to manifest whatever you wrote down. Curious to how this worked, we went deeper. Through hard work and lots of money, we recovered some of John Dee's original writings. Dee described a part in the brain that can connect with a higher power. Our team's neuroscientists identified this region as the visual cortex, located at the back of the brain and essential for image processing and creation. John Dee described that this visual cortex can be adapted for manifestation. That's how the law of Genesis works. By writing in the language of the angels, he could align his will, thoughts, and mind's images with the universe, allowing him to turn his desires into reality a process similar to alchemy, and forcing the universe to bless him. This is the essence of the law of Genesis. That's why it works so well. But it didn't end there. We wanted to make the law of Genesis even more powerful, and we discovered a few other tools you can start using today to manifest your dream life, like the genius mind, a protocol that will unlock your creative capacity and divine intuition. Once you start using the law of Genesis, your visual cortex will change to attract your desires. To accelerate this transformation, we collaborated with a leading neuroscientist from MIT. He studied the occipital lobe, a complex brain structure housing the visual cortex. He made several breakthrough studies. One of them was that certain triggers can grow the occipital lobe like a muscle. And he created a song that triggered this growth. When he shared this with us, we noticed that this works harmoniously with the law of Genesis and confirmed that this will accelerate the growth of your brain, even boosting your IQ by a few points, allowing you to tap into a divine intuition and immense creativity. But that's not all. We also created the divine fuel, simple godlike foods that will purge all weakness in your body. As the famous saying goes, mens sana incorpore sano, which means a sound mind in a sound body. You will get the food of kings from ancient times that unlock fast manifestation. These foods, spices, and oils clear your mind, blocking points and soul, and open the pathways to your brain so manifesting comes easy, making your connection to the divine will stronger, and thus your ability to bring your dreams into reality. With that said, I'm sure you're just as excited about this as I am and you would like to experience this for yourself immediately. So I have one final question for you. Are you ready? Are you ready to experience this divine transformation for yourself? Are you ready for the blessings and gifts the universe has prepared for you? And are you ready to finally break the curse of bad luck and the chains of poverty? Don't make the mistake I made and spend all those years struggling. Don't wait and watch your life flash by. Join thousands of others around the world and experience the transformation the Law of Genesis has to offer.
So pay close attention as I show you exactly how you can experience this. As I mentioned before, I took a massive leap of faith to share this online. I did this for one simple reason, so I could keep my promise to Mr. Colton, a mission that is more important to me than any amount of money. Because the law of Genesis gave me everything I have today, and I'm willing to give everything back for it. I was waiting for the right time to share this with the world. If you're watching this video, that time has arrived. That time is now. But I have to warn you, there's a reason they want to keep the poor poor. Mr. Colton explained it beautifully. Banks make money off of people who are in debt. So the more poor people there are that are in debt taking out loans, the more money these banks make. This system creates a cycle of debt where the poor pay more over time keeping them in a state of financial dependency and limiting their ability to accumulate wealth so the rich get richer and the poor get poorer. That's why they want to prevent the law of Genesis spreading at all cost. This could bankrupt them and cause a massive banking crisis. So they are paying close attention to my movements. But as an ex-Special Forces operative, I've managed to stay one step ahead of them. I am currently residing in an undisclosed location inside Russia outside of their grasp, ready to blow the whistle on the biggest breakthrough in history, a revolution that can change the positions of the rich and poor once and for all. And with a few of my loyal followers, we started Operation Phoenix. Our goal is to spread the law of Genesis as wide and far as possible before we burn down. But just like a phoenix, we will rise up no matter how many times we get struck down. Despite our team's small size against the behemoths who control the money market, our indomitable spirit will allow us to win in the end. However, they already managed to take down our website once, so pay close attention to what's next. And before you ask, Operation Phoenix is not for profit. First, this is way too risky to try to make money with. And if we did, we would auction the Law of Genesis at a private billionaire event on some remote island. Imagine the millions, if not billions, we could get for this codex. Second, we could easily get tens of thousands of dollars selling this on the dark web. But we won't do that. We will never sell out. As I mentioned before, I'm doing this to honor Mr. Colton and give the law of Genesis back to the world since I've received so much from it. So you won't pay anywhere near 10 grand for this. You also won't pay $5,000 for this. Not even $2,000. You won't even pay a measly $200. I see so-called manifestation gurus selling their outdated methods for more than that. In fact, we're not looking to make a single penny of profit off this. All I ask is that you help us keep the lights on at our media company. Help us run this website and feed the team who risk their lives every single day by spreading the law of Genesis. And for that, we ask a single contribution of $97. That's it. Just $97. But wait. Because you've watched so far, I know that you're dedicated to changing your life. Just like I was. And I remembered a time where I didn't even have $97 in my pocket. So I'd like to make you an even better offer. So I did some more calculations and confronted my team. I asked them to lower the price even more. They protested and said it would be impossible to pull off. That $97 is already too cheap but I quickly reminded them of all the hard-working people in the world, the veterans, first responders, and men who are responsible for a safe society, the single mothers, the single fathers, and even children who grew up without parents. What about them, left behind? Eventually, my team gave in and agreed, which is why I want to let you have everything, the law of Genesis, the genius mind, and the divine fuel for just $67. That's another $30 off the original price. All we ask in return is that once you manifest with the law of Genesis, you spread the word about this to your family, friends, and community. If everyone does their part, we can make the world a better place. And that would mean that even if the banking families or elites take us down, there will be enough messengers in the world. That way, the flames of this revolution will never be stamped out, and Operation Phoenix will continue even without us. Here's what to do next. There's a button below this video. Click it and you'll be taken to a secure checkout page. This checkout page is built and encrypted for total privacy and protection. 
We paid a lot of money for this technology to make sure your data never leaks. And it's the same software that e-commerce giants like Amazon use. Once you complete your order, you will get immediate access to the Law of Genesis, the Enlightened Mind and Michael's Might. You will get immediate instructions via a private email, including all the access links, meaning you don't need to pay or wait for shipping. Saving another $15, you save time and money and can get started in just a couple of minutes with the Law of Genesis. And that's not all. Despite the low investment, I want to make a vow to you with God as my witness. If for whatever reason you're not happy with your purchase, even if you decide to never open the codex and discover the beautiful secrets for yourself, then simply hit the refund button in your purchase confirmation email and we will return every single penny right onto your account. You don't even have to email us or speak to anyone. No hassle, no headache. Your investment is protected. So try it risk-free for 90 days, try it out and see the results for yourself. You don't have to say yes, just say maybe. Click the button below to give it a shot. Try it out for a couple of days. See the immediate results for yourself. And then try it out for some more time. Manifest even better results. Try it out on our dime and watch your dream life unfold. Because if you can write, you can manifest. And at the end of the day, I cannot force you to be successful. As the famous saying goes, you can lead a horse to the water but you cannot force it to drink. Meaning you can provide someone with an opportunity, but you cannot force them to take it. The final decision rests on you. You have all the information you need to make that educated decision. And by this point, you have two choices to make. To illustrate these two choices, I'd like to share a story with you. This is the story of two friends I grew up with. Both of them enjoyed the same educational upbringing, and both of them were equally smart. Both of them had the same opportunities, and their chances for success were similar. However, one accumulated fortune and generational wealth, and the other relied on his children for support. He had bad luck. The difference between these two men was not a difference in capability, but a difference in decision one man saw the once-in-a-lifetime opportunity presented to him during a crisis. He made the decision to use the law of Genesis and swam with the rising tide. The other man merrily cruised through life, even with opportunity staring in his face. The history of these two men will play out over and over again in 2024, which leads us to you. Just like those two men you now have a decision to make, you can decide which side you want to be on, the poor or the rich the haves and have-nots. Remember, 90 days from today, you can be nothing but a couple months older, or you can live your dream life. I'll leave you with the easiest decision of your life.